Welcome to my shop. This is my 22 by 22 two car garage that's never seen a car, at least since I have owned the property. Uh, this is my shop and the gist of this video is how to make a small shop work for you. Whether you're a professional carpenter or a hobbyist, you have to deal with what you have and make the best of it. So. At this stage of the game, I'm not going to remortgage to buy a bigger property and a shop that's three times bigger. So I'm just making this one work. And I'm going to show you a couple things so that uh, you have an idea of how you can make your shop, uh, you know, uh, functional for doing big projects in a small space. So <clears throat> as you walk in the door, um, I've got uh, lumber racks here that was uh, welded by uh, a partner of mine uh, from the police force uh, welded up this uh, great uh, steel rack for me. Um, so the idea is that when we open the garage door, we can bring our long pieces of material right in. Sheets of plywood go on this uh, plywood rack, although you can't really see it right now, but there's a plywood rack there that uh, my friend Bill made for me. Um, and it's on casters, same idea. Uh, so <clears throat> we stock the biggest piece of lumber that we'll stock that will actually run through the saw will be a 10 footer. Although we do have 14 foot pieces of railing that we, we use. This is one right here. Um, my helper Alden and I just finished up making up a, a railing here. Uh, one of the things I want to point out is that the shop is not pristine. It's not sterile looking and it, that's because uh, we use it every day and we're always busy and uh, I by default am not a real organized person and I have to work at it and uh, I, I've been checking out some of uh, Paul Aker's videos from FastCap on, on organizing my shop and one of the things I do at the start of every day and I got this tip from him is uh, cleaning up the shop getting everything organized before you start. And the trick is, or the sign is that when you put a tool down and it disappears into the vortex, time to organize your shop. So anyway, um, I wanna talk about how pretty much all the big tools are on casters. So starting with uh, that Delta 15 inch planer, it's on casters, so when I go to use it, I wheel it over here, and there's a, a 220 plug in here for the for for that uh, planer. Even this Hammer K3 winner is actually on casters, and there's a little uh, gizmo here, a little dolly that I can use to actually lift up the saw and move it. Although we've never moved it uh, since. Uh, since I had it set up. <laughs> and um, a little bit about the, the, the K3 winter saw from Hammer. It's an Austrian made saw. I had a, I think it was called a, a Durex uh, saw for the longest time. I bought it when I was like 25 years old and uh, it served me really well. And I'd been talking to the good folks at Wooden Edge Tools in Winnipeg, it used to be called Felder Machinery. And Ken, uh, Ken from uh, Wooden Edge said that if you can sh cut a sheet of plywood in your shop, a full sheet of plywood, rip a full sheet of plywood, then you have room for a, a Hammer K3. So that has been the biggest upgrade I've done is bought this uh, you know, professional grade uh, Austrian built um, cabinet saw with the, with the rolling track. This track is, uh, I, I believe it's, a, it's an 80 inch track. So when I go to sh cut a sheet of plywood, I have to be standing back here, but I can run that whole sheet through without a problem. And there's an outrigger for it and a cross cut fence. Um, this is a, just a, a really awesome thing. It's got the, uh, the scoring blade. The vacuum system, I've got a, what is that? It's a Delta vacuum system over there that uh, is hooked up to the saw, gets the bulk of the sawdust. And then I have a hose that goes over here to 
um, just a garden variety uh, rigid uh, saw that picks up the uh, dust off here. Although when we run it, it sounds like you've got a jet engine running in your shop. Um, the, uh, this area here, this is where we do our, our sanding and a lot of our domino work. Uh, usually there's an MFT3 table set up here, but it's at the job site. And one of the upgrades I'm thinking of doing is building an actual uh, workbench here that's uh, permanent and that's really solid with one of those big vices on it. Um, but everything sort of has a place and if you don't put things away, you're tripping over stuff. So um, what are, I'm going to show you how we have all our Festool stuff on carts and at the beginning of the workday, especially if we're transitioning from working in the shop to working at the, the job site, we'll load up these uh, carts with the Festool stuff, wheel it into our work trailer, and off we go. Um, I'll show you uh, uh, another uh, hidden uh, <laughs> bank of uh, Festool stuff. Over here, I bought these... Uh, little locking drawer guides <clears throat> all tucked away nicely so this is the uh, TS 75 we have both a 75 and a 55 55 is at the job site but this saw here we use a lot when door building or ripping down heavier uh, pieces of lumber it's got a lot more power than the 55 we use track saws a lot in our in our business um, we have <coughs> uh, OF 2200 Router uh, that is the you know honking big rotor uh, that Festool makes and we use that a lot for stairs and other uh, Jobs where you need to hog out a lot of material. It's really a, an excellent rotor um, I've got a OF 1010 here as well and then over here. I've got the OF 1400 uh, about the 20 year edition um, and, and sort of the uh, Domino XL 700 would be, you know, probably one of the favorite tools in the shop. We use it a lot, uh, as you can tell from my videos, uh, and it's really an awesome machine, uh, really well thought out machine. Uh, Festool Capex, below the Festool Capex, I've got a Festool MIDI uh, hooked up for the uh, sawdust. And one of the things that I don't have is a central uh, vacuum system where everything goes to. Just kind of don't have room. Uh, one of the thoughts I had was uh, if I can put one on the, the ceiling. I don't know if that would work or not. But on the, uh, this is a custom built um, unit for the miter, miter saw. I've got the uh, Craig uh, Precision uh, Saw Stop here. Uh, it works pretty good uh, for doing production uh, cuts on stuff. So I've got about 90 inches left of the saw and on the right I've got you know a good nine or ten feet. What I've done is I've made this Craig Foreman on stilts so that I can get a long board shooting off my miter table right underneath here like so. Um, all storage through here on this uh, miter station. So uh, just so you know, I get a fair number of comments uh, on my videos about, uh, you know, must be nice to be sponsored by Festool or are they paying for some of this influencing and so on and so forth. I'm not sponsored by Festool. Most of all the Festool stuff I have in my videos, I all purchased before I even had a, a YouTube channel. So. Uh, that's that's not a factor. Certainly I would love to have sponsors, but I don't have any. Uh, just so we got, I wanted to get that out of the way so that you understand. And the reason I use the Festool stuff is that it works really good and it's a really good system for moving, transitioning from your workshop to a, to a job site. And you know, the customers are really impressed when they see uh, your, your contractor roll in with all these tools that are high end, they're in stacking boxes and you know, you're not walking in with a bunch of cardboard boxes full of tools. That said, if you're starting out in business, um, you know, don't get the impression that you have to spend 
um, you know, half a million uh, dollars on, on a setup and end up living in a van down by the river. I mean, that's not the idea of being a self-sufficient carpenter. But anyway, uh, I'll continue on showing you the, you know, highlights of this shop. This uh, outfeed table is my assembly table and workbench. We got this big old birch top uh, from uh, a college uh, in the city here that was getting rid of it. And so I made this custom uh, assembly table. It's, uh, you know, it's dual purpose. It's an outfeed table, but it's where I do the majority of all my assembly of bigger projects. Say you're building a door or something. I really like those Craig uh, tracks with the clamps for holding things down, especially stair stringers. We do a fair bit of that. This is a router table. It was attached to my old Jurex saw, but now we have it sitting here. And eventually I'm going to customize the fence on the Hammer K3 so that I can um, use that fence on this uh, router table. Uh, router underneath, that's one of the upgrades I need to do is I need to switch out that router there. It's a Porter cable, it's a decent router, but <clears throat> for some reason the, uh, the housing keeps coming loose while you're routing. It's not a real uh, solid lockup on, on the clamp. Um, again, here's the, uh, the dust collector on wheels. This is a, I think a downdraft sanding table or sanding bench. But what it does is there's a furnace motor in there and it'll pull all the uh, sawdust out of the or saw, sawdust and also fumes out of the shop and it ports it outside, vents it outside. I used to do a little bit of uh, spraying uh, lacquer and stuff like that, but I don't anymore because it's just not a big enough shop for that kind of stuff, but that would work well. Bandsaw, also on wheels. Um, Jointer, also on wheels. Uh, one of the things that uh, I wouldn't mind, uh, wouldn't mind uh, upgrading is if I could find another place to store things like this, that I would be able to get rid of this storage unit. And but I have to figure out if I have to build another storage shed or something. This is my own design. These little I beams that I've made out of uh, two by fours and uh, OSB and they link together with cross members. Someday I'll do a video on that, but uh, that whole storage unit is supported from by the ceiling. It hangs from the ceiling, it doesn't sit on the floor. So that's kind of a neat little thing. Um, over here, the uh, Craig Foreman. Uh, this, this can just come right off uh, the, uh, the bench and if we're gonna use uh, the clamps or what have you use it for a different purpose. But this Craig Foreman is something that we use a lot, especially for stair building. And it can just punch out a lot of uh, pocket holes in a short period of time. This uh, bench you may have uh, seen in action when we use the stackable clamps from r, &R Clamps. Now those black clamps there were gifted to me by r, &R Clamps and they're a real good company and I really enjoy using their clamps. I use the red ones probably for 30 years and they work in these little tracks and I'll show you uh, that, uh, some footage of that in action. Of course, you have to clean everything up and that's the big challenge like I mentioned before. Uh, compressor, nailers. Um, I heat the place with natural gas that's provided by the city. Uh, so I have a gas heater to work, you know, to heat my shop and you know, you get sometimes where it's uh, minus 25, minus 30 outside, honestly, Fahrenheit. And if you just had a wood stove in here, once those, uh, once a wood stove coals, uh, you know, cooled off, you would have a whole bunch of condensation on your tools. So you have to kind of keep uh, a constant temperature. Uh, even when we're not here, we leave it about 50 degrees Fahrenheit or whatever that is in Celsius um, so that, you know, we don't get condensation on the tools. Uh, one of the upgrades we did, and I always say we because I've always had a helper. Alden is my helper right now and he's been with me for a couple of years and he's a great helper. He's also a good cameraman. But uh, 
One of the upgrades we did for um, the YouTube channel, but also benefits us, is uh, lighting. So I put LED bulbs in all these fluorescent lights. And I also was able to make a deal on these uh, lights, of uh, LED lights that hang from the ceiling in various places to give more light in the shop. And that's kind of the secret to uh, doing filming um, and having good, decent results. Uh, this uh, CT36 um, vacuum sits underneath the MFT table and this operates on one of those uh, Bluetooth things where I can just turn on the vacuum with this button here and it's really handy and I wish I had it on every one of my Festool vacuums because you know, if you're at the uh, top of a flight of stairs vacuuming uh, some railing joints and the vacuum's at the bottom, you gotta walk all the way down and turn it off and on and, and that's a really good uh, feature. Lots of clamps. Uh, you know, one of the limitations of having a smaller shop is that you have to do things in series. So what I try and do is do all my uh, material cutting first uh, then do the assembly and then later on, you know, do the staining and finishing because obviously you can't be uh, cutting materials while you've got uh, varnish or, or lacquer drying and you've only got one assembly table. So uh, for a one person or two person shop, this is just fine. Uh, you also have to think about the, the size of jobs you take on. Uh, for example, I've been uh, asked to do uh, kitchen cabinets a few times and um, that's a problem because I've got no place to stack the cabinets once they're made. But if you can find a job where, you know, maybe a smaller scale cabinet job where you can uh, make a unit, deliver it, then go and make the, the next one, go back to the shop and make the next one, uh, then that'll work. So these are the things that you have to think about and the limitations are there. But really uh, for a small business, uh, this is just just fine. You just have to think about the process. Lots of sheet goods. The styrofoam we use for uh, cutting on the bench with the track saw. All these uh, drawers here are specific. This is all the Craig stuff. This is uh, Festool clamps and, and whatnot. Blades and sandpaper. Uh, things for nailers. So each, each drawer has a different, uh, you know, I got it fairly organized, lots of pocket screws and so on. Here's the edging tapes. I forgot to mention I have a uh, portable edging machine. And the funny thing is I've got better drawer slides in here than my wife has in her cupboards. So th that's something I'll have to do eventually. <laughs> Over here in this corner here is where we keep a, uh, a Festool MIDI with uh, this Cyclone collector for, for extra sawdust. It works pretty good. Some bigger hoses. Of course, uh, there's a doggy door there for Autumn. And uh, you'll see her. She's kind of bored by this whole thing, and I hope you're not. Or maybe maybe if you're still listening, you're, you're waiting for something good to happen. But this is Autumn's spot. She's always in here, loves to be with us. And, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I will mention that uh, FastCap has been very helpful with my channel. I'm not sponsored by them, but they've helped me out with some really good products. And again, I used FastCap stuff way before I started the channel. It's good stuff. Paul Akers is a cabinet maker, and his philosophy to, is to make uh, tools that are functional and then they're not going to break the bank. And uh, that's kind of... Uh, the overview of the shop, I've got uh, some bigger uh, Festool track. I think it's 104 inches or so up here. I've got another one hung on the door that's 1900 millimeters, 74 and three quarters. And that, those little brackets that hold that on the door, that's a fast cap product. And it's really handy to, to uh, keep things stored properly. You can see there's every inch of space in here. I've got moldings hanging from the ceiling, um, you name it. So that's the name of the game. I, I imagine I'm going to be upgrading this continually. 
and uh, adding things here and there and making things more organized as we go. If you have any questions or comments or suggestions, uh, let me know and I'll get back to you. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, you know if this video is helpful and you know a buddy that's got a, a carpentry shop, you know, share this video to help grow the channel. Thanks for watching.